Good afternoon and welcome to LIBOR's Wednesday webinar and Global Awareness Month. My name is Marianne Monteleone and I'm here to introduce you and tell you a little bit about March being named Global Awareness Month, where we will feature different aspects of global business opportunity from hearing from a renowned panel who broke into the global business marketplace to understanding the EB-5 process to even hearing from Terry Morrison, uh, best-selling author of Kiss Bow or, or Shake Hands, uh, learning how to deal with different ethnicities and cultures of the diverse global marketplace. So to start us off, we have LIBOR Global Liaison, Evan Smith, who will tell us a little bit about global business and also introduce our renowned panelists. Evan? Thank you so much, Marianne. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Uh, my name is Evan, and it is great to be moderating today's panel with three of LIBOR Global Committee members. Before I introduce our guests, I'd like to break down the term global and how it can relate to your business. Global real estate is a sector of the real estate industry that is often misunderstood. When most real estate agents think about conducting global real estate transactions, they believe they need to be from a foreign country, travel somewhere overseas, or speak a different language. The truth is, we live on Long Island, where we have and welcome so many different ethnicities. Queens County, which is part of LIBOR, holds the Guinness world record for most ethnically diverse urban area on the planet. And it's also the most linguistically diverse with at least 138 languages spoken throughout the borough. Local realtors are conducting global transactions almost every day and some probably don't even know they're doing them. LIBOR deems a transaction is global when one or more parties in the transaction is considered an international or foreign client. The term international or foreign client is divided into two categories by NAR as either resident or non-resident. A resident client is a non-US citizen living in the US on a non-immigrant visa or recent immigrants who have been in the US for less than two years. A non-resident client is a non-US citizen who primarily resides outside the US and doesn't stay in the US year round. While the term international or foreign client can be divided into categories, so can the type of global transaction. You can conduct inbound global transactions with clients purchasing properties within the US or outbound with clients purchasing properties outside the US. Where clients are from and where they are moving to can certainly impact the transaction. Do you know if the person you are dealing with is making the final decision? Does your inbound client need help obtaining a visa? Or do you have a client looking to move outside the US and needs you to refer an international realtor for them to work with? It is important to understand licensing laws and regulations and to be culturally aware. The key to success is having a team of professionals to help with inbound transactions and a referral network to help with outbound ones. Today, I am joined with three of LIBOR's global committee members, Patricia Erker, K1 Song, and Yoshi Takeda. Unfortunately, Katie Cow is unable to join us today. Our panelists are here and ready to tell you how they became successful in global real estate. While global transactions are anything but cookie cutter, it is always informative to hear why they chose to focus and what they have done. If you have any questions or comments throughout the webinar, please write them in the chat box to be addressed later on. So I think we can begin, guys. So how's everyone doing today? Pat, yeah. <laughs> we have Pat Erker, we have Yoshi Takeda, and we have Kay Song. Uh, very good. Welcome, everyone. If you want to say hi to everyone first, and then we can start with our questions. Oh, hi, everyone. Hello, hi. everyone. Hi. All hi. right, awesome. <laughs> so um, today, we're breaking it down a little bit and going pretty basic on what global is, how you guys got started, and how other people can get incorporated in, into this. So our first question, which I'm going to ask all of you, is how do you go about conducting global business transactions? That's a pretty broad, com a pretty, pretty broad question. Um, but uh, Pat, how about we start with you? How do you go about conducting your global transactions? Well, uh, primarily, it's by they come to us. Being on the um, based on the western side of Nassau, 
eastern side of Queens for the past 30 years on that Queens Nassau border, it's just been an organic growth over the 30 plus years. So um, if we need translation, we have it. Bankers, we have them at our fingertips. <laughs> and um, the buyers and sellers are all getting very comfortable with the process here. Uh, through our connections in other nations, if someone is going to or from something, another country, we can help them with that as well, either by referring them to a professional in another nation or some type of financing in that type of nation or what, what the rules are for each different country, just like United States, sure. their rules. Yeah, I definitely understand like the organic growth of international business. I mean, you know, I said it in the opening remarks, but our, our area is so diverse, it's bound to happen. And just to understand how it naturally happens and being aware of, you know, your different types of clients and everything like that. Kay, how about you? How do you go about conducting your global business? Uh, the people, it, it's by, you go by a referral. I had the, the international buyer uh, through Kansas City friends who has a friends willing to buy a condo here in New York. So uh, I found a condo and the money is coming from China. And he is, uh, I think, 50% down. And uh, for me, the global client, uh, the procedure seems like you know same as local client. That yeah, uh, he got the uh, mortgage from the uh, local bank and then you know closed it you know same as like we do. Mm, that's interesting. So they didn't have any yeah. their money over. That's interesting. That's you know uh, for our guests on the on the call that don't know about that, uh, one factor that actually can occur is that um international clients may have a hard time getting a mortgage here. They may have a hard time moving their money from their country into New York. So it is actually interesting to hear that, Kay. And I, but, uh, I, okay, but I remember it, it took time because they have to bring the money from China. So the, the period of time is a uh, bit longer. De definitely, I mean, yeah, yeah. And Yoshi, I mean, it, when we think of <laughs> we think of you, uh, tell us about your global business. How do you, how do you go about transacting? Um, well, because I live and work in New York City. Uh, I live in Queens, so most of my transactions are global. People come from uh, different countries and they, they live and work here. Um, like, like neighbor, you know, they're trying to sell a house and they, their background is like, you know, come from different countries. It's, it's already, uh, you know, global transactions. So I would say like every day, all my deals, are, you know, somewhat it's like via either side, uh, like, uh, you know, the uh, global background. So uh, it's, it's everything that comes to me like naturally. Yeah, and, and you know, that you also brought up an interesting fact where you have to ask, you know, if you don't ask for someone, um, you know, some of the questions or, or who's buying the house or any of those right. decisions that may impact the transaction, you don't even know if you're doing a global transaction. Or not. Right. Um, yeah. You know, just because someone, you know, may look a different way or talk a different way, uh, you know, it, it's definitely always nice to check in and see and see exactly where, you know, Going on and what the use of the property is. Um, Pat, yes. how do you decide to focus on global transactions? It, again, it, it happened for us. And primarily after I got my CIPS in 2015, which of course I took with Yoshi and Kay. And um, since more than 80% of our transactions involve international buyers or sellers, that just it just happened so uh, that's when we became active in the global committee since most of the transaction i would think gradually on long island it'll be primarily <laughs> global by the uh, year 2030 because there's so many different variations of people and places and whether they're going or coming or buying an investment homes because the united states is still the safest place to put your money so many of our international purchasers are for investments, not even to live. Yeah, and with the rise of Airbnb and different things like that, mm -hmm. back to the CIPS designation for a second. I actually also know CIPS, as you know, and I am not a realtor. And 
from a, you know, of course I'm in the realtor association and I know about the industry, but from an outsider perspective, uh, the CIPS designation was so informative to get. Um, it really gives you such an, inf uh, you know, gives you so much information about how just to do business and how to talk to other people from other countries or the proper gifts to give if you're, if you're meeting someone or, you know, expect that they may be a couple of minutes late because you know, being punctual is not in their nature or something like that. Um, Pat, so why did you get the CIPS designation? I'm assuming that you were a realtor for a while and then became a CIPS. Well, the original plan was to take a uh, different course in a different foreign country. And as it worked out, LIBOR and NISA offered it in a, in a week, a concise week back in 2015, where I took it with Yoshi and Kay <laughs> and 30 some odd other people. So that's when I uh, decided to really just take it and be finished. And then the traveling became came after that. Sure. Traveling and meeting people in different nations came after that. Sure. Kay, how long have you been a CIPS for? Uh, four years now, but I, I'd like to give credit to Yoshi. Well, you know, he, uh, he bring me to this, you know, CIPS uh, class, and then uh, ask me to take it, and then also ask me to join Aria, you know. So because of Yoshi, I know what's going on out there. What is the CIPS? What is what is the, like Aria? You know, all kinds of global things. I, I'm learning from Yoshi. Yes. Yeah, Yoshi transcends the state lines. He transcends. All over the world, everyone knows Yoshi. Um, Yoshi, I'd like to uh, ask you a question about your NAR appointment. Um, I don't know if anyone else knows on, that's on this call, but Yoshi <laughs> is the chair for the CIPS Advisory Board on the National Association of Realtors. He thinks very highly of the CIPS designation, to say the least. Um, Yoshi, how long have you been a CIPS for? Why? Why is it important for you to be a part of it? Why? Why are other people, why is it important for other people to get the designation? Um, well, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, 2011, I went to NAR conference. That was my first time. It was in Washington, DC. I saved up all my money and went there and attended uh, international meetings over there. And it was like an eye-opening experience. Like people come from different countries, different parts of the world, doing global real estate. And I feel like, wow, oh, you know, I, I was missing so much. You know, I didn't know anything about this. And then I was talking to uh, uh, my friend. He has been doing global for many years. And I asked him, like, how can I involve with this one, this group? I want to you know, get into this um, group, a society. And he told me, Yoshi, you gotta take a CIPS courses. Then uh, when we come back to uh, Queens, I, right away I signed up for the CIPS courses. And after a few months, I got CIPS designations. And it's op opened up like all different channels. And I can reach out to all like 70 different countries and I can find all the realtors in different countries. And most of the realtors overseas, they have CAPS designations. So it's so, so much easier, so much, the you know, world is like a smaller to do business once you have like CAPS designations. Yeah. So every, I, every time, yeah, every time I go to overseas, um, they recognize me, I have CAPS, and right away, like, you know, we get along and, we, you know, we can, st you know, start talking about business. Yeah, they think you're on another level. You know, the CIPS designation, because it's so prestigious, it almost breaks down the barriers already and they already trust you. Um, and I can definitely attest for that international area in NAR conferences. That place is amazing with all of those international realtors that are there. Just see, you know, everyone around the country and around the world are, you know, everyone's in it together and to network, it's, it's really, really, really great. Um, so uh, Yoshi, can you discuss your process that you use when you help global clients purchase a property in New York? Um, so first you have to find out where they are coming from. 
and have to understand you know, how they understand their process of buying property in their countries, because it's so much different from us. So I have to explain the difference between their transaction and our way of transactions. And that's how we start. Yeah. You know, um, as you know, we do our global webinars. And one important fact about seeing the, the real estate markets that are in some of these under, other international countries is not just the eye candy of seeing these beautiful properties but it's to understand how their real estate market works so that if they were to come right. here, this is what they're expecting. Um, right. So, you know, it definitely, it definitely is really interesting. You know, if you know that a transaction that's going on in one country, you know, is primarily done in cash, you know, you maybe wouldn't want to come with them and start talking about different types of financing on things like that. Yes. I think that this is a question for everyone. Um, have you ever traveled for business before on a trade mission or anything like that? And have you ever gotten business from those missions? Pat, you can go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, actually. Uh, NISAR went to Italy uh, a couple of years back before COVID hit. And uh, we all attended two regional conferences in Rome and Catania. We stayed in contact and, and did a lot of personal work with seeing the um, properties in Rome and Catania. Uh, so they, they took us on tours. We sat during, they were more interested in how real estate works in the United States and how we have our organization set up. But uh, they explained the processes which were different in Rome than in, in other areas, just like the United States, 50 states, 50 different laws and expectations. Um, we're in touch with those people. In fact, we've given referrals to other agents nationwide when I get a call from someone from Italy who needs someone in Houston, we're able to refer another agent because they rely on similar type professionals to, to guide them through other transactions. Yeah. Um, through ARIA, we've attended some national conventions of ARIA because Yoshi encouraged us all to join and it's been an unbelievable experience belonging to Aria. It's forged a lot of friendships and business relationships between bankers, great agents like uh, who I'm co-hosting with and um, throughout the country. It, and we went to, it's particularly in Las Vegas. We had a lot of business, cross business from ARIA agents in Las Vegas who we met at one of the ARIA conventions because they did a local tour for all of the ARIA people there. So whenever anybody is any place, they should always stop in to another office, whether it's your franchise or just make a connection ahead of time. If it's a country, a state, whatever, because you never know what business comes from it and what lifelong business relationships and professional relationships you have, even with bankers or whatever in these other areas, but it's very interesting. So hopefully when COVID's over, we'll go um, with Yoshi to um, the Middle East. And um, of course, our organization is uh, ambassadors to CIRA in Spain. Now they have their annual Emotionate which in uh, I know Isabel is in our is in our our uh, is watching this and she's cringing at us saying it. <laughs> um, many of our members attended that conference in years past, and perhaps um, the end of COVID, a lot of LIBOR members will be going again to Spain, and uh, they have a lot of cross business going back and forth, and mm -hmm. and then Kay's been Kay's been travels to the east so <laughs> yeah okay so tell me about I know that you've gone um on a couple of trips yes it's about um how those trips have gone for you in terms of your business well uh for globally well actually I didn't get any uh business referral yet but for nationally because of the uh, the area global trip to to Hawaii, Seattle, and you know, wherever. I, through the ARIA member, when I go to like uh, Seattle, I met the old people from other, you know, the country, right? Mm -hmm. Or other state. 
So uh, 2021, I sold one building in Manhattan, which she sold it for six million. It, it was a referral from uh, LA, a uh, ARIA member. And then I sold, uh, oh, Bayside one house last year, also last year, sold it for 1.85, a referral from Florida agent. It's all through like a area, you know, um, like a group. So uh, for the global, uh, I, I, I attend uh, like a FFC, FFC Dubai, FFC Korea. I meet a lot of people. After the pandemic, I'm sure we can have, uh, you know, the business, you know, together uh, later. Like uh, what I did in uh, New York. And then Yoshi, I know um, you travel all over the place. You actually just came back from the Bahamas on a trade mission. So tell us about your travels. Um, tell us why you travel, what, why you think it's important to travel. Oh, well, so after I received CAPS designations, I start, uh, I mean, I mean I, Whenever I go to Japan, I just, you know, extend my trip to go visit and attend a real estate conference in Southeast Asia. So I been went to uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, uh, Mongolia, Philippines, Thai, Vietnam, all those countries. And every time I go, I'm probably I'm the only one uh, agent from New York. And that's spotlight me. Uh, also, uh, probably I'm one of the few Asians come from United States. So, and then every time I go, they see me and I start becoming a famous. Then I became like a point of contact mm -hmm. in the United States, a point of contact in New York. So every time they need something from the United States, the first person is myself to reach out to me and asking me for a uh, uh, you know, the opinion, referrals, that's how we start getting a business. Yep. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm reading some of the questions that people have in the chat and Phil is saying, Phil Racy is saying, it's time to take some CIPS trips. I'm going to ask a couple of questions from the Q&A before I go back to the questions that we have, just because I think they're relevant and I don't want them to get buried. Okay. Um, when you were helping your um, Chinese buyer, Yes. Was there a maximum amount of money that they were allowed to wire here at once? Was there only a $50,000 limit? Yeah, there is a $50,000 limit. So, so did they have uh, to do it in, in pieces or? Yes, yes. I think uh, they use like a, a relative. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, well, the good thing is that, you know, uh, it wasn't that hard. The procedure, as I told you before, is like the same thing like a local what we did. So uh, he put down like a 50% down and then he get the mortgage from the bank here, local bank. And then, yeah, so nothing different for me, for my experience. It's like a same deal. I made it here. How is the process but, of them getting the mortgage? Mortgage, uh, uh, because international, I, I recommend to put down maybe more than 50% so they can get the mortgage easily. The mm -hmm. bank will give you the loan if you put down, you know, 50%, no ducks, no ducks. Yeah. Sure. Um, also, I have a, a experience in the rental for the international from Korea. But over here, if you want to rent to, you know, the apartment in Manhattan, they are asking you for the income and credit and everything. But the student who comes from Korea, they don't have anything, right? So uh, in Manhattan, they have a, like an insurance company. Uh, the student to pay who wants to rent in Manhattan, they pay the insurance company almost about one month's rental fee. Then, you know, they guarantee for this student to, so they can get the, they can, you know, the rent to the apartment. Sure. You know, you brought mm -hmm. a very interesting comment um, about the students coming. Yes. That's a huge reason why international clients end up buying in in New York. Mm -hmm. We have great education. We have great schools. We have great colleges. And um, it's, you know, in some places, it's more cost effective to purchase the place or, you know, for right. years that their student is there as opposed to renting or paying a dorm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, Linda O'Connor asks, and I think that this is a question for everyone. How um, how did you get go about getting your first seller or buyer? Um, having the designation doesn't automatically yield relationships. So Pat, I think with you, you were saying that it's a little bit more organic. By virtue of location. I mean, sure. uh, being on the, on, the, on the Queens border, uh, well, we were based in Great Neck for 35 years. So, sure. you know, between, you know, the close proximity to the city, people want quick transportations. They're looking for uh, different amenities, whether they're parks, uh, uh, beaches, uh, sports venues, um, education systems. So, I mean, it's just been a lot of, cr a lot of things cross the borders on Little Neck Parkway. So between there and and all the way down, because we've sold down in Elmont, Queens, um, Brooklyn, Cypress Hills, Ridgewood. So anything, you know, pretty much both sides of the border in, in Nassau, Queens. And they just, just by being here, sure. <laughs> by default. I, I guess maybe a, I guess maybe a follow-up question, which we can all discuss with what came first, your first international client or your CIPS designation? Oh, first international client, sure. 1988 co-op um a professor from england and never bought any property before let alone a co-op that was a total um uh, that was a learning curve for him and for um the bank and every and for all of us because it was a long time ago and, and co-ops as we all know were more involved than houses so it was a uh it was quite the the experience. Okay. <laughs> but that it's, was our it's first like, international client. Because you didn't know London. what was going on, you're like, I need to get this education now to, to help mm -hmm. for the next one. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assume, uh, you know, I hate to assume, but I would assume, was it the same for both of, both of you, Yoshi and Kay? You guys got your first uh, international client prior to getting the CIPS. Uh, so, so I, I, was, I was doing international business without knowing it. That's what it is. Yeah. So yeah. I've been serving uh, Japanese communities and it is a international transaction, mm -hmm. but you know, <laughs> I didn't really pay attention, but once I have CAPS, I understand more. So, I, so that's why I can do more businesses. Uh, for me, uh, the CIPS designation, uh, well, actually my client or customer, they don't know about CIPS, but good thing about the CIPS that I have, with all other countries, professional realtor. If I have a CIPS, oh, they recognize me. So when I go to San Diego for the NAR, uh, so they, I, that's the good thing about CIPS. You meet the other professional uh, at the, you know, the conference or expo, so we can you know, connect. That's the, I think, a good, good thing about CIPS. So yeah, it's, like a, yeah, it's like a business club. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. You know, when you have CIPS, it's an understanding that you are going to be referring business back and forth and we are going to collaborate and we are going to make this deal work out together. Yes. Which leads me to my next question of how do you go about obtaining your referrals and how do you utilize them? Because I'm sure it's not every day that you have someone that wants to move outside of the country or vice versa. But when those come up, you know, how do you go about getting, you know, telling your referrals network of your <laughs> listings that you have or anything like that? Uh, for me, the, the, ref uh, the international client is by uh, the referral or my, uh, my friends or family, relative or friends. They, they recommend me to find something. And the rental I mentioned it is like a junior high school friend's cousin coming to NYU to study. And he asked me to find an apartment you know, for them. That's how I uh, you know, work with uh, normally the, the friends. I think it's a friends. Oh. Uh, um, I think also COVID and Zoom have really made the world smaller. So there are a lot of people who are, uh, can work remotely. And there are a lot of people thinking about moving to other places, uh, whether expats moving to um, find places like on our um, 
or monthly Zoom things where you know people can buy in Panama and work from there or retire to there. So I think that's um, this Zoom in general and the, and the COVID has created a a world where people can move around and they're exploring different possibilities. So we're getting a lot of inquiries about that, about you know uh, someone at retirement or close to retirement age or being able to work remotely, moving to someplace else, and and it's incoming and outgoing. So we have um, professionals we can rely on through the network in Spain or Portugal or Italy or the Bahamas that we can recommend um, they speak with first because the, the rules are different everywhere for um, people as far as visas, as far as becoming, uh, getting a second passport. So, I mean, that's, that COVID really brought everybody, real estate closer. Yeah, I, I say all the time that when the world shut down because of COVID, our LIBOR's global committee really took that and ran with it. I mean, those those global webinars that we do every month, we would never have done that if Zoom wasn't didn't become such mm -hmm. a, everyone's life. You know, everyone got used to doing it and we really were able to go all the way. I mean, we went to Japan, Singapore, we have Thailand coming up. I mean, so many other places that some people may never actually ever be able to go to. And, you know, you open them up to the possibilities of it. Um, Yoshi, you have anything to add about how you do um, how you do your uh, referrals? Uh, you know, everything comes naturally. Yeah. If, yeah. If they need you know, like anything in the United States, they reach out to me. The vice versa. Yeah. And, you know, actually someone um, in the in the chat just brought up a very interesting fact. Um, Frank took the words out of my mouth. Uh, it is very important to understand that the CIPS designation isn't a license to sell in another country. Yeah. Um, you have to be licensed, just how you have to be licensed in a different state. Mm -hmm. Real estate here, you need to be licensed in Spain if you were going to sell real estate in Spain or at least abide by the, the real estate licensing laws. Yeah. Evan? Yes. Um, okay, so Two thousand eighteen December, uh, you know, I, I attend the LPS in Shanghai. This is the uh, luxury property showcase show, and then when you go there, the, a lot of you know the buyer from China at the time they want to buy condo whatever house in New York. So we attend there. We bought a booth, and then. Uh, uh, because of the language wise, I, if I cannot communicate, or they do have an agency in China. They bring the buyer, they buy the condo here, then we give the referral fee. That's how we did the, you know, the business before. International I mean, business is almost like yes. entirely All just referral. on referral. All yeah, referral. yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I'm sorry, Kay, I interrupted you. No, that, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, one question, actually, that, that I think I may have sandwiched in between another one is, how do you go about letting your network know about your listings? Do you have um, a Facebook group that you notify all of your people about? Do you have a WhatsApp? Do you have a newsletter? How do you gain international interest from any of your listings? Well, a lot of companies, you know, their franchises, you know, a lot of people work for companies who, who automatically have a fee to some kind of international source. Um, and uh, then of course, once things get on the market, they, they just move through the Zillow's, Trulia's, whatever anyway. So it, for whatever reason, it's all gonna hit. I mean, one way or another, there's, there's so many, what, 56 major websites and K and, and they also have the, um, there's different websites in the, in the Far East that are really good. If you're on those that connected, you know, with the yeah, it's important to note that a lot of these countries though don't have an MLS. You know, they have mm -hmm. private areas or maybe mm -hmm. they have a website, and it's just you go to different brokerages to find out the listings that are going on there. And then of course, Realtor.com. A lot of international realtors mm -hmm. are looking on Realtor.com. For like me, um, when I have a listing, um. Uh, besides the MLS, uh, there's a, you know, all the, I try to put 
we add all, all kinds of app like for Korean people, Kakao Talk for Chinese WeChat, and then WhatsApp and Line. And also when you go to Facebook, they have a lot of group that you can just click it, then you can put the ad there. So I try to do, you know, everywhere. <laughs> Do you find that you get any in, like any interest from the from those efforts? So, yeah, so sometimes people asking from the uh, for the Korean people, you know, when I put the uh, ad in uh, from Facebook and for the Korean, you know, the uh, link. Sometimes people mm. ask me they want to see the property. Yeah, sure. I got the you know respond. And how about you, Yoshi? I know you post a lot of stuff on um <laughs> on Facebook about different events and different things like that. I'm sure you have a very strong network that you are um, sending things out to. Yes. Um, I use social media like KSA and also a, like international MLS type of thing. It's more like a portal site to, you know, market. But I think the best way to reach out to your contact people in overseas. Yeah. Yeah, using social media. Sure. So if yeah. someone wanted to, let's say, find a property in one of our in one of our partnering countries they could always go on to our website we have international relationships set up with 24 <laughs> associations now so we're getting there i know NAR, how many uh ambassador how many bilateral agreements does nar have 148 110 oh 110 i was a little bit over but yeah i mean the nar is there as a resource we are here as a resource to help people can if they ever have a client over there, um, you know, we'll start our referral network of, of relaying information and business back and forth. Um, so I, I think we briefly touched upon this, but are any of you members of a real estate associations such as ARIA, <laughs> NAREB, NAREB, or FIABSI? And if so, what are some of the benefits you have? Well, I think we're all members of ARIA. <laughs> and I know I've been to some uh, National Association of Hispanic Realtor events. Uh, and um, we just try and like cross, cross over into different organizations and different networks to, to just link up with other professionals who can assist our buyers and sellers because uh, it might be a language barrier, it might be a banking barrier, but there's always someone in this professional network to help. And that's the important thing that um, everyone helps each other out with what, what they need. If it's one thing and you mentioned about gifts in each of these classes, when, when they did the Americas, they did Europe, they did Asia, they did um, even down to what gifts should be appropriate for people or what people should expect. And so, most recently, um, they just added Africa to the, to the CIPS designation. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we have like a core group of professionals. Uh, I think one key translates every listing into a number of languages if someone wants to, to look at that. And so does Realtor.com. So um, it's pretty much every, we're all covered. And we have all of these nice um, agents and professionals to help us out. UK are you are you a member of anything other than ARIA? Uh, ARIA I'm also a member of a CARIA I, even though I'm not Chinese I'm a member of a Chinese association and there is a CARA which is Korean Realtor Association in New York. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah I think that's about it. Yeah. Mm. Yoshi how about you all of the above? <laughs> yeah all of the above plus <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't forget about FIAPSI. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, real estate. I think at the root yeah. of it all, it just seems that, you know, with global, it's a lot of networking, it's a lot of referrals, it's a lot of putting yourself out there, making yourself known that you're the real estate agent of that area and that you are their contact point. And then just being very, very uh, readily available. Even um, someone wrote in our in our question and answer, once you make your first deal, you have built that rapport possibly long term. <laughs> It's so true. You know, you do well. It, it's even the way that it works with local agents, but so much more with the international clients. They don't really know anyone else. Yoshi, when you go on those trips and you're the only one there, mm -hmm. you are Long Island. You know, you are 
you are the representation, you are their contact. It's a, it's a great candid market that you have told, you know, that you're able to market yourself to. Oh, right. so uh, I think we have just a couple of more questions. And then if anyone has any questions, I know people have been asking during the Q&A, but if you have any other questions, please enter them into the, uh, the chat or Q&A for us to answer. Um, so Pat, yes. what was one of the most influential international transactions, like your aha moment that told you that you should start getting involved in global business? Was it that, that transaction that you did with that professor? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it came more in the in the in the late '90s and 2000s when we saw the the in influence of international purchases coming onto Long Island and Queens, and um, that's really when you know we really had to get it get it together, and our team like had to know what was going on, how you know what what bankers type type people they use for different countries for different assets and just what the laws are in other places because um, everything is different and people need different paperwork to be able to purchase something some people may have um united states is unique in in, in as much as anyone from anywhere can purchase anything here but other countries it's totally different Foreign nationals can't purchase in certain countries. They can in others. They can only purchase a hard interest. So um, we, we really had to get on a game to know what was going on in other places. There's and, even certain areas that they can and cannot purchase. You right. know, only for locals and some are for other, you know, for expats or other people that are relocating. We're very fortunate here that anyone from anywhere can buy anything. So we really needed to know more about what, what the world was like. And how about, uh, how about Kay? When did you decide that this was, that global real estate was your area and that this was something that you were gonna be focusing on? Well, when I, uh, when I attend uh, like an expo like in Korea trade mission or the Dubai, it feels like, you know, getting to know other country people know uh, like a friend as a realtor, uh, you know, uh, it's getting familiar with them closer, and uh, uh, um, so my point is that uh, I could do the business like you know the local, because uh, I met a guy in San Diego from uh, Nicaragua who came from Nicaragua, and then because we say in a handshake and you know introduce each other, now it becomes local. That's how I feel. And if Nino. <laughs> audience he is saying global is local yeah <laughs> it's global <laughs> right yes absolutely you know if you're in there i'm shouting out to you right now <laughs> and how about you yoshi one last comment um I, th I think what i find out was like uh usually bigger dealers come from overseas and then mostly like uh, referrals so i think referral and networking is the key for global business sure um, yes, William, I see your, your, um, your comment. I can, we can email some people, uh, we can email everyone some useful links and tools that we have mm -hmm. at our website, lirealtor.com slash global. Um, we have a bunch of resources that are available on there that can help you um, with the global real estate business. We have the referral form mm -hmm. on there. We have translator um, translation services. We have reports. We have our webinars. We have contact information for the countries that we have mm -hmm ships with we are here and we are here to you know dedicate it to helping everyone break into this kind of kind of complex market because you know there's so many different avenues that you can really go to it's really hard to say that you are going to do them all and it's hard to say that you're going to be doing them every day but just to be able to be prepared and know that they are there um and knowing the tools to be able to successfully navigate them Evan. What was the date for upcoming CIPS course? I, we I, have, I so in order to obtain the CIPS course, it, you have to take two core classes and three elective courses. This year, LIBOR is co-hosting with NISAR, the two core classes, 
We have the local markets class, which is coming up on March 3rd and March 4th. And we have the local transaction tools course coming up on March 15th and March 16th. And then we offer the elective courses also online, but um, one of our partner associations, uh, Northern Virginia Association of Realtors is actually hosting the entire CIPS designation certification course. And they're offering it for $549 virtually. So you can attend all five of them and become a CIPS within five days. We'll have all that information available on our website at www.lirealtor.com slash global success month. This is a website that we have that we've created just for this special month um, to really bring about global awareness. Does anyone have any comments or any questions from the audience that they'd like answered before we end our session? I'll take that as a, as a no. Um, so I want to thank all of you for being with us today. Global Success Month began with the mission to help our local agents understand global opportunities and break into the global marketplace. Be sure to join us every Wednesday this month from 12 to 1. We have a stacked lineup of webinars to help you succeed globally. Next week, we have the pleasure to feature Terry Morrison, author of How yeah. It Hands, who will be presenting on introductions, communications, and closes across cultures. Later this month, we will have webinars discussing different types of immigration visas with Julia Park, international trends and global, on global economic updates with Gay Corariton from NAR, and even a look at the real estate market in Spain with our ambassador association, Sira. Check, out, check it all out at our global success webpage at www.lirealtor.com slash global success month. And we'll see you next week on our next webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe.